Hey guys, if smelling great is a top priority, Scentbird has an awesome special for you. If you want to try a new clone at 30% off your first month's order, use the code SAMGOLD30 in the link below. In our last video on this channel, we talked about what makes TJ Hawkinson the best tight end in this draft. We also discussed that Noah Fant is another Iowa tight end that is very good on his own there's a good chance he'll be taken in the first round. Well, after watching his tape, you can see exactly why. Fant is the definition of a mismatch athlete lining up in a tight end's body. Standing at 6'4 and 250 pounds, he absolutely tore up the combine. He ran a 4'5 40-yard dash, his three-cone time was incredible at 6'8 1, and his broad jump and vertical jump left no doubt of his explosiveness. Immediately when you turn on his tape, you can see that natural athleticism. His effortless burst to get the blazing speed can instantly leave a defender behind. As I studied his tape, Fant is a perfect contender for the big slot role in the pros. He can also be used as a lone receiver on 3 by one sets on the boundary where you see guys like Travis Kelsey and Jordan Reed line up. In my opinion, defenses will have a very hard time game planning against the skill set. Your average linebacker will struggle to carry him up the seam, and Fant should require safety if the defense wants to play man coverage. One of the things that I really like about him is his ability to stem underneath routes. He can create separation with crisp footwork at the top of his routes, and he had some really nice breaks. He steps on the toes of the defender, and he can use his length with a veteran shove to create last-minute separation. Another thing that caught my eye was how he attacks vertical seams. He winds the defender outside before using his burst to get up the field. He does this very well. If he ran seams and posts from a cadence splint in the NFL, he would have a lot of success attacking the middle of zone defenses. Additionally, he's also a great red zone target. He has good body control, and with his lateral agility and quickness, he can create instant separation for throwing lanes. I think whatever team drafts him next season needs to get him involved on the goal line. He has too much talent to waste in this part of the field, and he can definitely help a stagnating offense. While his potential and upside is clearly there, there are definitely things that I think he can improve on. First, he has issues with drops. This is the main thing I worry about. He has dropped almost 14% of his catchable targets in college. That's terrible, and he has a serious issue making catches in traffic. If he feels a defender near him, it definitely messes with his concentration and the ball will hit the turf. Now, after going through his tape, Fant actually made some pretty awesome grabs. Seriously, some of his catches, like this one against Indiana to track the ball in the end zone, really make you excited. What was kind of interesting was that he was actually more consistent making spectacular catches rather than grabbing a spot or stick wrap between zones. In my opinion, while he certainly has upside and is capable, this is still a cause for concern. Obviously, making routine catches is a large part of a tight end's job, and I want to be confident that he can be trusted to keep my offense on schedule. The second thing that I think he can improve on is his strength through routes and physicality attacking the ball out of the air. I felt like he was bumped off his routes too easily, and if he's going to attack linebacker zones, he needs to be more physical to not get affected. The final thing that I think he can improve on is his ability as a run blocker. While TJ Hawkinson is known for his prowess, the same can't be said for Fant. He's not bad or anything like that, but Fant is simply average. Yes, he can definitely play the inline tight end role if you want him to, but he needs to improve in his technique as he gets too high in his stance. I also think he needs to improve in his functional strength at the point of attack if a team wants to play him in a gap or power scheme. Again, I think he showed upside, and he definitely plays with good effort, especially on combo blocks, but run blocking is one of the bigger areas that I think he can still improve on. For fans pro comparison, I'm going to cheat in this video by giving you two players to think about. The first is Vernon Davis. Davis matches fans' incredible upside with his freakish athleticism. Both tested great at the combine, and they each can be mismatched nightmares when asked to vertically stretch the defense. Now, Davis was the better prospect coming out of college. He was stronger through his routes, and generally speaking, he was seen as the next level talent in his position. As a prospect, I think Fant has Davis's upside though. If Fant ended up having a similar career as Davis, this would mean he turned into a very good player. While I do think Davis is a ceiling for what I think Fant could become, I think it's important to bring up his downside risk as well. For that reason, the other player I think about when I watch Fant is Eric Ebron. Ebron, who has been in the league for about 5 years now, has never really taken that next step in his development. He's slowly getting better as a consistent receiver, but drops are still a big issue. He's dropped roughly 10% of his catchable passes. This is simply too high. Plus, his run blocking has never been his strength. In my opinion, I see Eric Ebron as the floor for Noah Fant's career. To wrap up this video, it's Fant's freakish athleticism and potential as a receiver that'll get him taken on Thursday night. I currently give him a late first round grade, 
And if your offense needs a spark, especially in the red zone, his upside is clearly there. All right, guys, if you're like me, you know that clone is nice, but you have no idea what to get, then my friends at Scentbird have a great product for you. They have a monthly clone service that allows you to try a new scent each month. It's a very cost-effective way to test out all 600 of their partner products. Plus, with thousands of reviews, it makes picking each scent easy. Every month, they mail you a travel size amount that lasts over 120 sprays. Yes, in a 30-day month, that's four sprays each day. This is much better than your sample vial that you grab at the mall. I love the convenience, and since I travel for work, they make it super easy to test out each scent. Over the past couple weeks, I tested out three different clones. I grabbed Aqua from Bulgari, which is a nice oceanic citrus smell perfect for dating. Then I tried the one from Men from Dolce & Gabbana. This made me feel super manly as it smelled like amber and tobacco. Finally, I tried Arrows from Versace. This is great for all day use at the office and it has hints of vanilla and cedar that ages well as the day goes on. Again, if you want to mix things up but don't want to pay $50 for a brand new bottle of clone, I highly recommend giving Sempert a chance. You can get 30% off on your first month's order if you use my promo code SAMGOLD30 below. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. As discussed before, I'll continue updating my big board on my Patreon account and we'll be releasing mock drafts once April rolls around. Also, if you want to see what I'm working on next, you can follow me on Twitter at Samuel R. Gold.